Hey guys, John Rettinger here, and I'm back with a viewer mailbag. So for this round of the viewer mailbag, I've actually pre-screened four questions, and these are all recent ones that were asked within the past week. So let's go ahead and get started. The first one here is from user Submissive Dean, and he's asking about custom banners. The question reads, hi John, I've noticed that a lot of your uh, directors and have custom banners up and I was wondering how I could put up a channel banner or a banner on top of my username in my videos. Thanks. Well, this is a very easy answer. It's actually a question that I get quite a bit. You have to be a YouTube partner in order to get the channel branding features. So that means the bar on the top of my page or the banner that shows up when you're viewing one of my videos, you have to be a YouTube partner. I made a video a little while back about how to be a YouTube partner you want to go ahead and check that for references. So I hope that answers your question, Submissive Dean. All right, the next one we've got is from The Skib, asking about battery life. Hi, how much battery life are you getting with your MacBook Aluminum? So on my MacBook Aluminum, I always have the brightness turned all the way up. I hate looking at a non-bright screen. I have Bluetooth turned off and wireless always on. And just doing standard web browsing, I generally get close to three hours of battery life, which is actually just about what Apple claims. Battery life on the MacBook has been really impressive. I do keep it very well calibrated. And if you're asking how to calibrate your battery, all you have to do is let it drain all the way. So when it starts to say, turn off your computer, power's running low, let it keep running, make sure you save everything, the computer will eventually turn itself off or actually it'll put itself to sleep. Once it's in that mode, plug it in, and let it charge all the way back up to 100%. So that goes from zero to 100. So you get really a limited um, battery memory. So you actually will get your full capacity and actually you'll be able to see how much battery life you actually have. It'll be a more fair, fair representation of what you have. So that's how you calibrate a battery and I hope that answered your question. The next one, moving light or wrong, is from Kevin McGovern 777 this is actually a little bit of a long one, but it's a question that I get quite a bit, and it's about my job and education. Hey John, great channel for starters, but that's not the point of this message. I'm just curious if you have time to answer this, and if you could answer a few questions. So yes, I do have time, and I'm going to answer it for you right now. I'm 16, I'm at the point where I want to start deciding what I want to do with my life. Technology really interests me, so what I was looking into is IT a lot. But something that really started interesting me was management whether IT or business, but for some reason I've started to find that more appealing. But I was curious, since you seem like a very happy guy, which I am, what did you go to university to study? And as I understand, you're in graduate school now, and what are you studying there? Lastly, what exactly is your job or position at the moment while you go through graduate school, I would assume in order to get higher up? If you don't have time to answer this personal information, that's fine, I don't have any connections at this point in my life. And he goes on a little bit, so let's end of the questions. So actually I made a video a little while back for Inside John's Mind where I answered kind of what I do and my education, but I'll give you guys a kind of a brief synopsis. So I'm from Southern California, but I did my undergraduate degree or my university degree as, as those in Europe and abroad call it, at the University of Rochester in upstate New York. I know, California, upstate New York, big climate difference. Um, but it was a great school and I was really happy to be there. I got a degree in religion and classics, essentially was a history degree. And from there, I really wasn't sure what I wanted to do. I've always been fascinated by what motivated people. So right out of school, I tried to look for something that I could use that sort of motivational tool with. I kind of had it in my head that I wanted to be an attorney so or a lawyer. So I studied for my LSATs, which are the entrance exams for law school, and uh, did well enough to, to get in. And I applied. And my parents convinced me before I went to law school to work in a law firm for a year, and I fought them on it tooth and nail, and in retrospect, I'm so thankful that they did tell me that, because I realized law wasn't for me. It's a great profession, it was just too big a time commitment, and it was too big of an uphill battle, and I couldn't see the top of that hill from where I was, and I'm the kind of person that always needs to be, be moving up and see where you're going and see the next step, and it was just too hard to see that as an attorney. So I kind of reevaluated what I wanted to do. And I was fortunate enough to go back to my liking of finding what motivated people, and I got a job at the very bottom of an ad agency. And this ad agency is actually one of the biggest ones in the country. They were doing all the ad work for one of the largest automotive manufacturers. And I was what was called a floater, which is essentially an assistant to the entire firm. 
I made appointments for executives. I would make airline reservations. I, I mean, I would do any sort of small job that needed to be done. It wasn't putting my degree to good use. I wasn't really learning, but I was kind of seeing the bigger picture. So I was fortunate enough to do that for about three or four months and ended up getting promoted uh, a few times. And before I knew it, I was doing advertising work for the automotive company. And it was a lot of fun. It was a really great experience. I was living in Los Angeles at the time, and I'm from Orange County, which is about 45 minutes down south, and I wanted to move back home. So I ended up getting a job at a financial technology company um, doing marketing. It was a small, very small company with a really limited staff. So I was able to do responsibilities and do jobs that really you don't get a chance to do as a junior level person. Since there's no one else to do them, I always volunteered. And because of that unique experience, I was able to kind of rise up that ladder a little bit uh, to eventually where I was actually running the marketing department. And uh, it was kind of at that point when I realized that I was going to need some more skills to, to run a business and run, you know, one day my own company. So I decided that I wanted to go to graduate school to get my master's degree. And that's what I'm doing right now is I'm getting a master's degree. It's called an MBA, a Master's of Business Administration um, from a local university uh, right by me, a University of California uh, school. So I'm doing it at night, doing the videos and trying to uh, find my own way like the rest of you guys are. So hope that answered your question, give you a little bit of history of kind of what I've done for a job in education. The advice I can give you is education is the most important thing. Make sure you get your degree. You might not see it now, how important it is. You might say, why do I have to take biology? I'm never going to be a doctor. It's not always for you, but it's how other people might view you. So if you're going for a job and they're looking at your resume and they don't see a college degree, they might think you don't have the wherewithal to stick with something. It just is a good representative representation of you, that you can stick with something and that you have a foundation to learn from. So that's, that's my advice. Sorry to get all preachy on you there, guys. The next question is back to technology. This is about the iPhone and the next generation. This is from... Evan Mixon, John, I currently have the 3G iPhone. I'm going to upgrade to the new one that's supposed to be coming out in June or July. I have 400, 141 contacts on my iPhone 3G. What's the quickest way to move them to the new iPhone? This is a really easy answer. iTunes. Take your iPhone 3G, plug it into iTunes, sync up your contacts, whenever the new one comes out, whenever that might be, plug it in, hit sync, and all your contacts will be there. Nice and easy. So guys, this is just a short edition of viewer mailbag. I'm using my hands a lot during this presentation. Um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed. Keep sending your questions, and I'll keep doing the viewer mailbag. I can't always respond to all of them, but I certainly do read them. So I'll see you guys in the next one. For exclusive content, be sure to follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash John4Lakers. Bye, guys.